So today was a day I was really looking forward to as we were getting a new Nintendo Direct Indie World presentation. Now, I like indie games. There's a lot of indie games that are coming out that I'm actually interested in to see updates on these games. Games like Hollow Knight Silk Song, games like the House of the Dead remake, because that game looks absolutely awesome and I'm a huge House of the Dead fan. And of course, new games like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge. These are all indie games. There's tons of indie games out there. So I always like these presentations. For, for the most part, because today we got a Nintendo Direct Indie World presentation and uh, it was something. I mean, there, there was video games there. I think they were video games. So basically, we're going to talk about this presentation and why it just made zero impact on me personally. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like and share the video. But without any further ado, let's get into this Nintendo Direct Indie World presentation. Now, this was promised to be about 20 minutes or so of new indie games and upcoming indie games. It ended up running about 23 minutes long. So, you know, I was kind of hopeful there was going to be some fun stuff here. Uh, the first game that we got to look at is from the creators of The Messenger, which is actually a game that I really enjoyed on the Switch. It's a 2D ninja style game, essentially like a ninja Gaiden thing, but then it kind of opens up and becomes a little bit different, more like a Metroidvania style thing. It's a really fun game, a really good game. And this was a 16-bit sort of aesthetic turn-based RPG called Sea of Stars. Now, visually speaking, I thought this game looked really nice. You know, it looked very clean. There was like some nice lighting effects as well. And this game actually takes place sort of in The Messenger universe but it takes place before the events of the messenger so you don't really have to have played the messenger to sort of understand it but i thought that was kind of cool uh mitsuda does some of the music in the game who also did music in games like chrono trigger and things of that nature so obviously that's going to be a good thing for a lot of people but this game is a holiday 2022 game which I mean, really is a ways away. I, I kind of thought this was a weird way to sort of start out this presentation because of the fact that, hey, you know, this you're not going to play this game for like a year. So it's like, why are we showing off this when there's like literally hundreds of indie games that come out every month? But, you know, Sea of Stars, it did look pretty cool. The next game was a game called Alicia. It was a 3D puzzle adventure game that takes place within a deserted temple. Now, this game was actually sort of interesting because it was designed with the Nintendo Switch in mind. You could do two-player local co-op and basically the way the gameplay is it sort of adapts to the Nintendo Switch and it gives you different perspectives which I thought was kind of nice it's a interesting looking game there's like monsters in the castle as well or the temple that you're viewing uh, I'm not huge on 3d puzzle platformer games you know usually there has to be a little something else into it but I thought this game looked kind of decent uh, this is a spring 2022 game Locomotive was the next game on the docket. Now, this is a point-and-click adventure game coming to us from a brother duo who decided to make a studio together. The visual style is a lot like Monkey Island and a lot of those 90s point-and-click style games. I didn't have a computer at that time, so I never really played any of these games. There's lots of animations. You're on a train basically trying to solve a murder. You play as different characters, full voice acting. It looks all right for fans of the genre. This is a summer 2022 game. Next up was After Love EP, and uh, this is a game I probably would never play, but, you know, if it interests you, that, that's a good thing. It's essentially a story-driven game. We all know how much I love those sort of things. I think, like, the Life is Strange crowd will really sort of dig this style of game. You play as a musician whose girlfriend passes away, and he's trying to find love again, but the girlfriend is, like, a ghost and, like, telling him things and, like, making him find love i don't i don't know that's sort of stuff that's like beyond me honestly i should make a game sort of based on the stories from my life but it'd probably be rated like adults only or something like that this is a summer 2022 game dungeon munchies comes out today on the nintendo switch this is a 2d side-scrolling action platformer which are with a retro aesthetic because you know, we've never really seen a game like that before on the Switch. Basically, you're hunting monsters and you're cooking and eating them, which will give you new abilities or different weapons to acquire. Supposedly, there's an interesting story in the game. Like I said, this game does come out today, so there's a stealth drop, which I like to see, even though if the game doesn't interest me, you know, whatever. I'm not going to be too selfish with that. Figment 2 is the next game. It's a musical puzzle adventure game that takes place within the human mind. Once again, I would like to see a game that takes place within my human mind because that would just be absolutely bizarre. There's local co-op, you fight enemies, you solve puzzles, and there's music-based boss battles. This game will be coming out in February of 2022, and a free demo will be available today if you want to check it out. 
Let's Play Oink Games is a collection of board games for the Nintendo Switch. Now, this is a multiplayer based game and it actually has online multiplayer, which I thought was kind of cool. Also, of course, there's local multiplayer as well. There's more games being added to the base of the game anyways that you can get. They didn't say if it was going to be free or paid stuff. It comes out today. I don't know what Oink Games are. Uh, uh, these new board games or these games designed just for this game. I, I don't really know. But hey, that's that's something. Endling is a game where you play as a fox in a dystopian near future where pollution and stuff is rampant and you're basically the last mother fox in the world. You have three cubs and you're trying to get to the end of the game with your three cubs and of course yourself alive. It's a part stealth game, part survival game, part adventure game and honestly it looks kind of cool. This is probably my favorite game from the presentation which I mean that should sort of tell you how the rest of this video is going to go. It has a nice art style though. It comes out in spring of 2022. I kind of dig it. Ali Ali World got an update, which of course is a skateboarding game that looks pretty decent. Definitely more of the action style skateboarding, not really realistic. I did dig the first game. This game is obviously a lot more open and there's more things you could do in it. It comes out on February 8th of 2022 with pre-orders available now and you get some pre-order bonus stuff if you decide to do that. River City 2 Girls got a debut trailer and the game will have online co-op, which is a very good thing. Now, I know the first River City Girls game was really well received, but I never got around to playing it for whatever reason, which is weird because I'm a fan of this style of game. You know, the beat em up genre reminiscent of games like River City Ransom, Combat Tribes, uh, Double Dragon, stuff like that. So I don't know. Maybe it was just kind of like the girl thing, you know, my fragile masculinity or something sort of turned me off. But I do kind of want to check this game out. The soundtrack in the game, at least what they showed in the trailer, if that music is in the game, that soundtrack slaps. So I'm going to have to look up the first soundtrack for River City Girls because it was the same returning artist who who did the original soundtrack and i was a big fan of the music in that trailer uh the game comes out in summer of 2022 then we got the sizzle reel where they show off a bunch of different games and honestly there was like two games that i thought looked kind of interesting and one i'm kind of cheating because it was a dinosaur game and we all know that i'm a five-year-old when it comes to dinosaurs so i automatically get interested in it but yeah dinosaurs are cool um a bunch of other stuff there was a game called grime that i thought looked interesting it looked kind of like a metroidvania style game in which you like pick up parts of yourself within the world and then you build yourself i don't know these little sizzle reels they don't really tell you anything so you kind of got to go out of your way to look for it but i did think grime looked kind of neat and then we got the final game which was a game called oamari i believe it kind of looks like undertale I, I honestly don't care about this game you know i thought the cartoon you know the hand-drawn art stuff looked kind of neat but uh, just kind of has a vibe of like several other games that we got from this presentation. Uh, this game will be coming out in spring of 2022. They kind of made it seem like this game was a big deal. So I don't know if it came out on PC or something like that, but yeah, that was the last game we got in this presentation. So what did I think of this Nintendo direct indie world presentation overall? I honestly thought it sucked ass, but like that's just for me personally, because usually I could find like a couple games in these that I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. Or, oh, I might want to check that out. And then there's usually games that I'm like, oh, I definitely need to play that game. I definitely want to check out that game. But in this presentation, there was too many, how do I say, artsy fartsy games. You know the type of game I'm talking about. The game that I would never play. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, RGT, that's very selfish to say that none of these games interested you. But it, it's my video. Like, wh what sort of opinion do you want me to give? Like, I understand that there are tons of people out there that probably really like this Indie World presentation. And for them, I'm very happy because they got to spend something watching 23 minutes of new games. And some of these games probably hit and resonated with them. And I'm not like the big stereotypical alpha male whatever people like to think about me but it's like there was just nothing here that sort of grabbed me there was nothing here that i was like oh i need to play this game yes i do like a lot of standard styles of games but why are you showing me holiday 2022 games when games like shredder's revenge and house of the dead are obviously coming out before that time frame i think house of the dead would have been a great game for this because of the fact that we don't know anything about it really like we know that there's going to be new controls and we've seen a little bit of the new graphical style but like this game should have been there there needs to be a better balance there was way too much artsy fartsy sort of like you know the, the people who get like a liberal arts degree in college jesus christ don't 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 
don't try to cancel me over this. This is just my opinion. You know that there's a certain style of game that you assimilate with certain people because, you know, that's the style of game that they like, and there's nothing wrong with that. What I'm saying is, for me personally, for me, the 36-year-old male, there was really nothing here for me. There was nothing here that interested me, except maybe the endling game. Like, I did, I did think that looked kind of cool. It's obviously one of those heartstring tugging games, but I did like the visual style of it. But yeah, overall... This was 23 minutes of just like pure boredom for me. I was just like, oh shit, come on, give me something. Give me something. But they they forgot that gamers like me existed in this thing. And that's okay. You know, you gotta you gotta think of everyone in these things. But maybe next time, a little bit better balance, and maybe I would have liked it a bit more. But those are just my thoughts on it. Like I said, this is my channel. This is my video. If you disagree with me, if you thought this was the greatest indie world presentation in the world, you are free to make a tweet and say that or make a video and say that. Like, I'm not going to stop you. I understand people like different things. Just I didn't like any of this. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. Give me your thoughts in the comments section down below. Am I just missing the mark with this? Was this really a good show or was, did it suck? Did it suck? And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new, hit that subscribe button. I think I already said that. I don't know. Maybe I didn't. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.